Hey guys, in today's video we are going to be talking about Hogwarts Legacy and the pros, the cons and all the weird bits in between. So let's get straight into this. So let's be honest, the uh, game does have some very big glitches that, you know, uh, we should be used to nowadays, but I wish it wasn't the case. But the combat, the story, everything else makes it come together so well that the glitches don't really affect the story and everything too much, to be completely honest. But there has been some times where I have had glitches that ultimately kind of look really funny and kind of out of place in a serious situation within the game especially towards the middle to the end of the game is where I noticed it a lot where sometimes my character's eyes are, uh, my character that I created the eyes would sometimes be a little bit off like kind of creepy in a way which was very entertaining to see when I did see it because it ultimately led to a little bit more of an extra fun surprise for me to be completely honest. The combat in this game is really good. Honestly one of the more interesting parts of the game as it feels very fluid like the Batman Arkham combat with the really like punchy attacks, the really like it all it really hits hard like you can feel it as if you are doing the magic yourself in real life which obviously we can't do wish we could but it feels really good and satisfying to play with to spend hours and hours sinking within to really really give it that excitement that a harry potter fan would want like myself but the uh, there is definitely some issues that i do want to talk about the main one being the grinding within the game which yes should be expected to, for an open world game as most of them do have a lot of grinding like Far Cry and Assassin's Creed and stuff like that but it's nowhere near as bad as those games as I do feel like it gives you a sense of purpose when you have gone up into the, in the ranks as you go through the game as for certain missions you do need for a lot of the missions should I say you do need to very much grind to get that unlock point to be able to access a certain mission but the, um, the, the getting part of getting there is quite a lot of work sometimes especially towards the end of the main story as you depending on how you have progressed depending on how much xp you have at the time you may need to do a lot of work like i did myself spending hours and hours maybe a week or more to really get that reward that you need to, to unlock the next part of the game which i am currently at rank 29 in the game and I, to, in order to unlock the last mission, I believe I believe it's the last main mission in the game, or whether it's just a side mission, I don't know. But you need to be on rank 34, and I have completed a lot of the stuff in, within the game, like all the challenge, a lot of challenges, the um, a lot of the side quests, where a lot of stuff that I need isn't really showing up. So I am just really at this point in the game where it's become really annoying to grind because at the start it's not too bad because you really get to um, find a lot of missions, a lot of side objectives to do in between the main ones that are really exciting and really fun but a lot of the later ones are very very agitating, they're really annoying to get through as it doesn't always tell you what you're supposed to do even though you do have an objective marker saying what it is that you have to do in order to complete that side objective which for some of these they aren't worth doing as they 
sometimes barely give you any XP to be completely honest, but they are still worth doing, they are still worth trying out. Who knows, you might find something fun or interesting inside of a cave somewhere that is far away on the map. But there is definitely one thing I'd like to bring up which would be the boss fights. The boss fights, there isn't that many of them to be completely honest and I wish there was more to be honest as the ones that were there brought up a really interesting fight, made, made you think about what spells you needed to cast in order to defeat them. Like, for example, uh, the final boss fight with, I always get his name wrong, uh, Rag Ragnok, the, you have to basically use all different kinds of spells according to the colour matches on the sphere thing is that is flying up in the air which for me that boss fight was really really difficult as it really really pushes you to the limit so the best thing I would suggest to anybody who is going to get there soon is to stock up on the Wigan World potions as they are the ones that really really make or break your final boss fight against Ragnarok which if which for me was i was very lucky that i got through that fight because i had 25 wigan world potions to start with and i ended up with none by the end with pretty much zero health left but was just about defeatable with that many so if you wanted to be careful with the wigan world potions i would suggest getting to about 50 Wigan World Potions, but I think, if I'm right, the potion limit is only 25 anyways. So once you've used one, you probably should go find another one and just keep them stocked up. The second worst thing for me that I would like to bring up is the potion shops or any of the things that require you to buy things with the galleons i think the currency is which basically if you don't have enough of the galleons you need to somehow grind or capture beasts to then sell them to these people which apparently sends them to a zoo somewhere from what i've heard but you need the gold in order to unlock potions to create the potions you need for certain missions within the earlier parts of the game mostly with the um, I think it's the Professor Black one where you have to I think it's a Thunderbrew potion that you have to make but it requires you to buy a potion which can sometimes go up to like 5,000 galleons which in this game is very hard to get and really find as it, the game doesn't really tell you where to look for them which most of the time I spent my time looking on YouTube trying to find what, where I can find these things because the game doesn't tell you any of this stuff as far as I'm aware, unless there's something that I missed maybe within the field guide pages which I collected later on in the game, possibly, then I might not have read something, but I really wish that it was better than what it was as it would make for a better experience overall in the game for me to give it higher praise than what I'm already giving it because I already really love the game so far as I'm approaching the end. The um, probably the most exciting part, that one of the most exciting parts for me was finding the uh, finding the beast to collect. Uh, uh, for example like hi High Wing, I think High Wing is really cool when you first first approach high wing in one of the side missions with poppy i believe it is but then you have to you have to go find high wing because he gets captured somehow by the poachers but when you collect high wing so as a rideable beast uh, i just don't think he's that great to be completely honest, it's very slow, very slow moving 
for something that majestic. I just really wish there was more to it than that, to be honest. I just really wish there was more to him than it just being this really slow ride back to Hogwarts, which was like, it's a quite a long journey from where the location starts at the end of that mission. But the another complaint is just that, I mean, it's a, it's a generic open world complaint, but some of the missions that some of the side missions send you on are like, why can't you do that yourself? You know, like it feels like just side missions for the sake of side missions sometimes, which is fine because some of them was good, but a lot of them were like, yeah, could you go collect so-and-so for me? Because I cannot be bothered. But other than that, it is really okay to be completely honest. The um, so some second so some thoughts that I would like to see in possibly a sequel or something along those lines would be a less annoying grind, but you can still probably keep the grind in there to kind of keep it varied and a little bit interesting still. But I would prefer it to be a little less annoying and maybe some more XP from each mission as I feel like that would really make the flow of the overall game better overall. I would like also for the um, beasts to be a li like higher wings to be a little bit faster and a little bit more um, a little bit less annoying to fly as it can, they can sometimes drift off when you are going in a certain direction which is fine but uh, it, it could be better it could be better controlled the uh, another thing obviously like I mentioned is that I really wish that the galleons was better as I do feel like the galleons was probably one of the worst parts to collect in the entire game when you are ranking up to get the potions you need for the side missions which could be done with like more more amounts of galleons gathered around the map so that it doesn't feel like you're just running around in circles looking for things at the last second trying to buy a thunderbrew potion and my uh, last point is that it would just be cool to see more m more boss fights because the boss fights that were there like ragnarok um, i always forget the other two the other two that are after you in the main story they were really cool as well but i just really wish there was more of them really and maybe like just more cool fun stuff to do after you've completed the story that keeps you coming back to the game because I feel like it's like a once and one time and done sort of thing for me right now but I have heard that there is some sort of maybe multiplayer component coming at some point down the line which I am would be down to play I really really want to check that out as it would just be a really fun time for me overall because i really love the game i just loved a lot of things about it but with an improvement with a sequel or something else it would really make it a big and better experience overall so for me i would probably give this game for now i would probably give it a nine i'm gonna give it a nine because feel like I can't give it that extra one as there is just a few problems which I personally think could be better in a sequel or something like that. But guys, let me know what you guys thought about this in the, com in the comments down below. Do you like Hogwarts Legacy? Well, tell me your favourite parts in the comment section down below. Give me all your pros and cons that you thought about the game. Would you want a sequel to this to this game? Would you, what, how do you feel about a multiplayer thing possibly happening? Let me know all of this in the comments section down below, guys. And until the next video, guys. Peace.
Hi there, also guys, I did forget to mention something within this video that I would like to quickly just put, touch upon as I may or may not make a video about this, I don't know yet. But the Sebastian Salo storyline in which I think was probably one of the most impactful parts of the game. I just really think that there is so much impact, so much emotional depth, so much power within the way that part, the, that side storyline is told. The, uh, the brother trying to save the sister from a curse, the overall like father not agreeing with him to then try, having to decide between the sister and the father. The whole thing is a really, really well impactful storyline in which I just really, really love so much. And it's probably one of the best parts of the game in which I was surprised that I didn't mention in this video. But I really enjoyed my time going through that storyline. Like I, That was like the most exciting point after ranking up to get to those missions, the Sebastian Salo side missions, in which I enjoyed really really a lot throughout the entire game they're, they're learning all the dark magic spells which I just had to do because I just I wanted them because if you get them it makes a lot of the missions within the game really really easy for example where you go to fight the, the it's third the third boss fight in the game so it's kind of like the side mission after defeating Ragnarok where you basically get to use a Valakadavra on the final boss and it just makes it so hilariously easy because all you have to do is cast that spell and is dead in one hit which is just an amazing spell to have unlocked if you haven't already unlocked it. I would suggest following through on his storyline before them before the missions, as it is just a lot of fun to just have in your spell compartment, or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, that is just a quick roundup of my thoughts on that particular section of the game. Let me know what you guys thought about that also in the comment section down below. And now I'm actually going to end the video now, guys. So, peace.